Welcome back at Border Sessions. Uh, two days uh, of interviews from The Hague. Uh, this is the last one from uh, day one. Uh, welcome uh, my last guests today. Um, Catherine and Zachary, you um, did your uh, talk, your, your mm -hmm. duo presentation early on under the title We Have Always Been Biohackers, uh, Six Years of Genomic Gast Gastronomy, I yes. think you say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so can we start there? What, what is that? Uh, so Genomic Gastronomy uh, or the Center for Genomic Gastronomy is an artist-led think tank, we call it, which is basically uh, us two plus a, a morphing group of collaborators and we mainly do projects and research into human food systems. Yeah, uh, and can you give me, uh, me an example of what you've done, project mm -hmm. you've done during the last uh, six years? Yeah, one of the ones we talked about today was we made a barbecue sauce, which was a very special barbecue sauce because as many of the ingredients as possible were made by mutation breeding. So scientists exposing plants and seeds to mut mutagens to change the genetics of the plants. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was a sort of somehow a combination between investigative journalism and cooking. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and what, what um, uh, why is it so interesting to you? What, what, why do you want to do this? Uh, you know, before Kat and I met, we both were really interested in emerging technologies and food. And we both were doing work in that topic somehow. So when we came together, we got excited about that and energized each other. But also we saw there wasn't a lot of subtle or thoughtful or unusual work about GMOs. All of the work was people screaming, either this will save everyone and will end starvation, or they'll poison everyone, this is terrible. So we started off taking on that topic and trying to use humor, dark humor, yeah. to do something a bit strange. And since then we've gotten more and more interested in biology and ecology and food in general, not just sort of GMO transgenics. Yeah. So what are the important lessons you've learned during the last years? <laughs> the important lessons? Well, I think uh, one is that there's no black and white. All of these issues are really fuzzy and gray and there's positive and negative aspects with all of these new emerging technologies. And um, yeah, and that we should listen to people's fears and hopes and dreams for these technologies and consider uh, not just the science and the technology, but also the political aspects, the social aspects, the ecological aspects of these technologies and how they might uh, affect our future. Yeah. Um, uh, what, uh, how, how did it help you that you say we are artists? How, how, did, how, how did that make a difference, so your, your tragedy? Uh, I think one thing it allows us to do is to talk about taste and beauty, surprisingly, and the single easiest way to disarm conversations about starvation is actually to focus first on taste and flavor. Once you start asking these seemingly surface questions, or questions that have to do less with politics or economy, you find out they actually have everything to do with those topics. So for maybe too long in scientific and political questions we ignore taste and beauty and desire and so art allows us to really foreground those mm -hmm. and then come at these other questions in a new direction. Mm. I and mean, I think we both come from an arts background and so that's also where we're coming from <laughs> and I and yeah. There's that too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Training in artists. Yeah. This barbecue sauce you, uh, uh, y you made um, say I always start from the taste, when it's about food, you start from, from the, the taste perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so, did it taste different as well because of the, 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 the project and the traject uh, you choose? I don't think it tasted different, it tastes really good. Yeah, that's important. I think yeah. it uh, it's pretty basically... pretty citrusy because of the grapefruit. Yeah, the ingredients that we included were ingredients that you find in the supermarket, but that we uncovered were developed with this history of mutation breeding. and so. It's a history that's largely forgotten, and so part of making the barbecue sauce was to uncover, both for ourselves and for other people, this history that was largely forgotten, but also, I think, um, yeah, to make a good barbecue sauce. Some people wouldn't taste it. They were too scared. And then we actually explained to them, oh, here's the packages of the raw ingredients that went in. We just bought it at the store. But because they knew the history now, they didn't want to put it in their body. Really? So that was quite interesting that they were almost like, I don't want to taste it. Mm. Even though they would have probably tasted most of the individual ingredients their whole life. So. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And, it's, uh, and this uh, awareness, uh, raising awareness, is that an important thing for you? And yes and no. It can't be preachy. I think one of the ways that we work as artists and not activists, for example, is that we do want people, we're not trying to build a coalition or to necessarily have a strong 
direction they should go and we want to give opportunities for people to figure out for themselves. And sometimes what they figure out we might disagree with. Hmm. And it's an important aspect of, of maybe leaving things a bit open uh, and letting people bring their, take their emotions seriously. Uh, and also just to ask new strange questions like, what does this taste like? Or what does this, uh, yeah. How much smog do we eat? What does yeah. a different smog from China and smog from Netherlands taste like? Yeah, and how yeah. does that affect what we eat? And, yeah. yeah. Um, so you, you've talked uh, about, you said well, we've, we've been biohackers um, for, for, for six, six years. Um, <laughs> what, what are the, the trends and things happening in, in this space? Is it an active space? Is it a growing space? Or is it a small group of 100 people uh, around the world that have been doing this and keep on doing it? Well, when we say we've always been biohackers, hackers we're not referring to ourselves and the last six years but actually to all of humans okay yeah. in the in the, our long history yeah and basically the us using that phrase as a way of seeing that you know that the fact that we exist and since at least the dawn of agriculture we've been manipulating our surroundings yeah. somehow and so we manipulate the food that we eat we manipulate um, yeah the ecological conditions that we live within and so saying we've always been biohackers uh, the second half of that is like well we need to start being conscious of that and think about it more critically and carefully and not just blindly you know <laughs> terraform the entire planet into oblivion yeah well, we, we found more people doing projects that were quite related to since we started. Of course, we found out you know, this great idea, but you're not in isolation. Yeah. So in Oregon, there's a, a plant breeder who's working with chefs to make new breeds for the kitchen. That's like a, a thing we thought was quite unique, but she was already been doing that for a while. And on the other hand, with new techniques like CRISPR, you have these guys making different kinds of you know, weird glowing cheeses in the lab and like calling and saying, oh, we saw your website. We're doing this. What do you think? So that's quite interesting. You do it for a while and then people start coming to you with these strange questions, yeah. which is almost like throwing them back at us. Like, oh, mm -hmm. how do we do yeah. this? Mm -hmm. so, so what's the next uh, step for you? The next step? Uh, I think we want to keep developing this work and maybe be a voice in this conversation about what should we do about biotechnology and food? What's the possibilities? What should we not do? What are the things we really want? And uh, to not just stay in the art space. So far we've talked to a lot of different people like scientists, computer hackers, farmers, and that's a more interesting thing for us to try to do than to only talk to artists. So like being here today, we see guys with startups and tech companies. That's already much more different audience than just going to a museum. So we can keep doing that. The dream is like maybe someone will invite us to a farming conference next year. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and so so yeah <coughs> and, and for you what what would be pretty cool for you? Oh, I don't know. There's, there's, <laughs> there's so many different directions that we're going in. Um, but at the core, I think what's interesting is, yeah, reconsidering how the food system works and, uh, yeah, imagining a more biodiverse and beautiful food system, I think. Okay, thank you very much. No small ambition. <laughs> <laughs> Make no small plans. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, watching. We will be back uh, tomorrow at uh, 11 o'clock. Uh, another day of interviews from Border Sessions in uh, The Hague. And of course, all the interviews we're, uh, we've been doing will be on our YouTube channel. So for uh, watching later. Thank you. Thank you.